Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Rabi Mahmood and welcome back to lecture number 28. Today we are going to start with the discussion on language and culture. We have moved uh, far beyond the language structures and uh, we have also uh, previously we have looked at world Englishes and today we are going to look at the importance of language in reference to culture. So the main theme would be language and culture not only language and culture rather we are also going to look at the language communication and the culture what uh, like what uh, and how these three uh, things are interlinked with each other the language the communication and the culture how they are interlinked with each other so let's see what is this and uh, what is the link between all these things introduction to language communication and culture uh, by the way, when you just go through the title, uh, Introduction to Language, Communication and Culture, what do you understand? Do you, uh, like, is there any idea that comes to your mind about this? Language, communication and culture? Language is perhaps needed to communicate and communication is needed to stay in a culture, to exist in a culture. This is what a simple link can be between, between language, communication and culture. How is language related to a culture? Firstly, the first question, definitely. How is language related to a culture? How is a language? Look at the difference between the first, this is simply language, the general language, culture, the general culture. How is a language, a, a specific language, related to a culture, a language and a culture. Both questions are valid and we look at issues through several lens. Lenses, yes. Uh, how are we going to uh, analyze these questions? Actually, we are going to look into different things. The first thing is the kinesics and the paralanguage. The words definitely would seem to you very, very odd. Perhaps you would be really very um, you would be uh, perhaps at, uh, you would be thinking that what are these words about? What are these terms, kinesics? Perhaps you would not have gone through this thing. Paralanguage, perhaps again you are not aware of these two terms. And then there are the two more terms for, your, uh, for uh, more worry. The first one is ethnolinguistics and code switching. Ethnolinguistics and code switching. We are saying that we are going to analyze the language, the relation between language, communication and culture by looking at the, these two things. Kinesics, paralanguage, ethnolinguistics and code switching. Isn't really amazing? Isn't it really very uh, strange? Similarities and differences between human and animal communication. We are going to look at that as well. While we talk about communication, let me tell you that our communication is a good combination of two things. Communication can be verbal, it can be non-verbal. Rather, it is said that we more use our non-verbals rather than the verbal. For example, right now, I'm speaking, the words I'm using, it is verbal. But you know that I'm using my hands, I'm using my face, I'm using my body, sometimes I'm moving, sometimes I'm, I'm like leaning forward, sometimes I'm going back, sometimes I am uh, blinking my eyes, sometimes I am moving my fingers, all these things. What is that? This is non-verbal communication. And perhaps sometimes I'm tapping my hands. This is non-verbal communication. I'm not using any words for this thing. For this thing, I'm not using any words still. The whole of the message is being conveyed. I am using these non-verbal communication gestures to enhance my verbal communication, my speech. There are the two basic types of non-verbal communication. The first one is kinesics. It involves the all too familiar body language, all the familiar uh, body language, for example, facial expressions, the way your face speaks, your gestures, your hints, even eye contacts, etc. And the second is paralanguage. 
One is kinesics, the other is paralanguage. Paralanguage are the vocalizations that often accompany speech. You are speaking, you are using words, you are using language, that is language. What is paralanguage? Pa paralanguage are the vocalizations, are those voices, are those speech sounds that often accompany the speech, that are going to accompany your speech. There are slurs. There are tone of voice, you know, I'm sometimes using a very loud tone. Sometimes I'm very slow. Sometimes I'm stressing on, I'm putting stress on some words. Sometimes my voice is shrieking. Sometimes my voice is getting louder. So, these are all our para language. Are the vocalizations that often accompany speech. These are slurs, tone of voice, non meaningful utterances, including um, uh, uh, sometimes when I'm trying to speak and I'm using uh, 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 these are unmeaningful para language uh, that we have. The non verbal communication is divided into two main things. The first one is kinesics, the other one is para language. Kinesics. Kinesics are what? Kinesics is about gestures, about the hints. Look at the, look at the picture and tell me what the gesture is this. It's about victory. It is perhaps, is, or it is about congratulations. Look at the picture, what, the, what that person is saying. This person is wishing good luck perhaps to somebody else. Well, we look at the picture. Kinesics is a system of analyzing postures, facial expressions, and overall what we call body language. It's the posture. Kinesics is about the postures. Posture is the way of standing and sitting. Look at the way that person is standing. He looks more confident. Why? Because he has his one hand this way and the other hand this way. This shows the confidence. This shows the power that he has. And well, look at the face, facial expressions. We are saying kinesics is about facial expressions as well. He has got very jolly facial expressions. Perhaps he is happy. He is overjoyed over the success. So this is all. If is all his bo body language. What his body language? Uh, what message his body language is conveying? It is that he is happy. He is congratulating. He is wishing good luck. Perhaps the things like that. See the thumb up. This gents like whatever you are doing, buying his brand of coffee perhaps. Yes, another interpretation. Once I said this is perhaps you are wishing good luck and perhaps there is some there is somebody who is uh, doing some kind of shopping over there and uh, and it is give, it gives us and and the okay. If I am having this gesture, if I am showing this to a person, and perhaps if somebody is selecting something, I would say, oh yes, I like it. Means this is the same brand that I wanted. You are enhancing your verbal speech by using your non-verbal things. In other countries, it would mean, well, you know, think middle finger, okay. This is one example how the same gestures might mean different things in different cultures. Yet yeah, different, it can have different uh, meanings in different cultures. Yes, you can think. Kinesics is about the facial expressions. Look at the girl who is in the picture. What does her facial expression say? She's so happy. Look at the people who are going to, who are having a meeting in the picture. I see that we have a new face amongst us this morning. Uh, the boss is looking at those, two, uh, at the at the candidates of the meeting, and he is actually announcing as if there is some new face in the mo uh, in them. Social smiles are are commonplace. Though women may do so more than men, a matter of expected social sensitivity. Yes, a very good thing. Smile. Actually, while we are talking about facial expressions, while we are talking about uh, cultural traditions, while uh, we are saying that uh, this thing, this uh, language is an expression, social smiles are commonplace. It's an, it's an, uh, it's a, it is cultural. It is a representation of your cultural identity. So what is happening? Whenever you are giving a smile, your smile is 
again you are it's a non verbal communication that is going on by your smile because smile is a kind of kinesics and kinesics kinesics is one of the type of non verbal communication yes uh, and, and the second point that i said that it is cultural it varies from one culture to one culture to the other culture in one culture maybe let's say in our in our culture if we talk about uh, about giving smiles and uh, uh, about uh, something and if we talk about uh, smiling uh, perhaps uh, we are we cannot we are not supposed to uh, give to pass our smiles to the strangers because this is not culturally acceptable they are going to mind it they are going to feel bad about it um, whereas in western cultural this is a tradition that uh, the strangers they would smile at the face they whenever the strangers see each other they pass a smile and this is a, as a symbol of courtesy as a symbol of politeness that the two strangers are meeting each other so they are passing smiles whereas in our pakistan in our country this is not appropriate this is not acceptable especially in the opposite genders a man cannot pass a smile to a woman it is totally it is taken very very negatively and you know that how negatively it is taken whereas in in western culture it is it is uh, it is a lot of uh, acceptable uh, in there frowns express frustration sometimes cynicism as this cartoon suggest if you smile you are naive yes actually uh, sometimes you are frowning uh, frowning is uh, the expression of anger uh, anger uh, you have got some uh, expressions of anger on your face and what would it show it would show the frustration it would show cynicism as if you are sick of something you don't want to uh, go on with the things so uh, this is uh, the frustration facial expressions in the eye contact are the most widely used forms of kinesis gestures are also really very very frequent facial expressions and eye contact eye contact are the most widely used forms of kinesics you need to have an eye contact eye contact is really very very important uh, in academic setting as well for example if a teacher is teaching at the class it there must be a good eye contact teacher must maintain an eye contact with the students but perhaps the eye contact in the general setting in pakistan is not uh, is not said to be a very uh, culturally accepted thing it is not appropriate whereas uh, in western cultures it is appropriate and understood gestures uh, call system and uh, para language look at the uh, look at the pictures do the some uh, do they say really say something are you understanding what is a non verbal communication this is again a non verbal communication we are looking at the picture we are trying to analyze it what does it mean para language consists of extra linguistic noises it consists of extra linguistic noises accompanying language para language consists of extra linguistic noises extra linguistic linguistic word from language extra that is beyond language they they, they are uttered with the language because as uh, as everybody perhaps whenever they are trying to speak there are some speech gaps they would do well hum um these are different sound these are some extra language um you would say these are some para language uh, uh, thing, uh, things uh, the para language features that would be there voice qualities voice qualities uh, the voice qualities are again really very very important uh, for example the tone the slurs the cartoons the other background noises are also very very important while you are communicating vocalizations identifiable noises turned on and off at short intervals um mm, um mm, other kinds of hesitations etc when you are hesitating uh, uh other things the word the voice is like that this is uh, an example of para language hum 
vocal characteristics sound production such as laughing ha 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 the sound like this this is a vocal characteristics of para language there are some vocal qualifiers as well vocal qualifiers that uh, the the things that qualifies that uh, enhances your vocal quality your speech tone or the pitch for example there is one statement that is written it's get out simply if i say get out uh, it has got some other tone my pitch is very very low i have got a very uh, soothing tone get out uh, as if i'm requesting uh, somebody not to disturb me and please leave the room and for the get out it means i'm ordering somebody in the and i'm angry if i would shout and say get out i said get out again i'm being more dictatorial i am being uh, more authoritative and i'm giving order to some person to get out to leave it so these are again the your tone would change with your uh, different things with your uh, language with your style with your purpose of speaking segregates segregates are what segregates actually the word means segregations mean uh, the intervals segregates shh it the first is shh if somebody is speaking we saying shh just to keep silent uh, and then another is oh ho oh ho again these are segregates we are segregating the things we, and then another is hum Mm -hmm. Among others, we will be using these uh, segregates, and these are again the examples of para language, historical linguistic techniques. When tracing the history of language, linguists have no writing to rely upon. Yes, it is so true. There was actually there were there have been so many varieties of the languages, and that the, that the linguists were really worried that w uh, on which language they should rely. several techniques have developed to trace the probable changes yes there were different techniques there were different devices that have been developed for the passage of time to trace the probable changes to look at the changes that that were to take place look at the first technique glottochronology look at the word this is glottochronology glotto that is related to glottis chronology related to history chronology of uh, uh, and uh, the study of the events of the history glottochronology the reconstruction of the past languages on the assumption that 14% of a language changes every 1000 years what is glottochronology look and what is a uh, uh, point of focus in glottochronology is the reconstruction of the past languages on the assumption the reconstruction the language is getting reconstructed once it was there now it is being reconstructed with some new additions the reconstruction of past languages which language is the old languages that have already gone the reconstruction of past languages on the assumption that 14% of a language changes every 1000 years after every 1000 years there is 14% part of the language that is going to change let's see a, a good example would be as uh, look at the example uh, of let's say shakespearean language there was a language of 1564 to 1616 Shaks that that is shakespeare's era and what is it right now is it we are we are in 2012 we are residing in uh, living in 2012 count the years is does it make 1000 years if it make 1000 years so definitely there would have been a change of 14 at least 14% in that specific language of shakespeare because this is actually proven through research and this is what glottochronology says then the next is core vocabulary comparison of the words for common objects based on similarity comparison of the words 
words are compared for common objects for the same common objects they are based on the similarity there is a similarity so the words will be compared so that is core vocabulary a list of words is compiled for each of the two languages that refer to the objects that are common everywhere a list of words is compiled for each of the two languages list of the words is compiled for the two languages that refer to the objects that are common everywhere their body parts sun rain stones streets and others things like that the closer the vocabulary cognates of the similar words between two languages the more cl closely related the two languages are thought to be the closer the the two languages are in terms of their vocabulary items in that sense we can say that they are more related to each other they are considered they are thought to be related to each other models of language change the first one is language family group of language descendant from a single ancestral uh, ancestral language yes uh, this is what we have already discussed in detail that language family uh, is um, actually uh, a family of uh, those languages that have descended from the same region that have come from the same origin example is indo-european is descendant from the proto-indo-european pie uh, choose of languages family tree model a model that emphasizes the derivation of language from a common source a model that emphasizes the derivation the derivation of language from a common source it, it would look at the derivations of one language that is uh, arising from one common source wave model a model that emphasizes borrowing across contemporary languages a model that emphasizes borrowing that looks at the borrowings across contemporary languages across contemporary that are present at one time see how many models are there the first one is about the language family that is descendant this is about actually hierarchy this is way language family this is hierarchy Pro family family tree model again proto indo european there is proto indo european languages and they are further subdivided into different so many things then comes wave model where what is the emphasis of this wave model a model that emphasizes borrowing accents contemporary borrowing across contemporary languages across contemporary languages the languages that are existing at the same time it is going to look at the borrowings that what this language has borrowed from this thing what this language has borrowed from this language what this language has borrowed borrowed from this language it is going to look at those borrowing aspects only we have before this discussed in detail that what is kinetics kinetics as we have seen just a quick recapitulation that what kinetics was kinetics was actually uh, it was it was more about uh, the gestures about the facial expressions then uh, there were the two main branches the the one was para language as well we have looked at the para language and we have looked in detail that what are the features that come in the para language and then we have looked at the historical linguistic techniques we were trying to find out that how uh we can trace uh that the history of the language and uh, they were actually initially there were no writings to rely upon we have looked at different models of the language change as well now we are moving on to ethno linguistics ethno linguistics and other important uh, branch and other important things uh, that we can uh, that we can uh, judge another important thing that can help us judge some specific features some specific components of language for example in ethno linguistics uh, let's uh, look at the definition before actually i move on to the definition let me just firstly uh, concentrate and pay my more focus on the title 
the title is ethnolinguistics it is ethno linguistics ethno the word ethno is derived from ethnography and linguistics is the main word linguistics coming from the systematic study of language ethno is derived from uh, where from actually uh, the ethnography and ethnography is a method of research but before going on to that let's look at the definition of ethnolinguistics the definition says that it is a study of the relationship between language and culture so now you are, perhaps you are getting the point we started our lecture today with the introduction to language communication and what and the culture there was the first main focus of our lecture today language communication and culture and we actually had two questions that what is the language what is our language or what it has what how would it refer to a specific culture and we said that we can answer the, these two questions by looking at the two main things the main the first thing was kinetics and the paralanguage where we are going to look at and the second was ethno linguistics and there is another thing that we'll be uh, coming back to later on ethno linguistics now we are realizing we, that ethno linguistics is basically the study of relationship between language and the culture where the where one language and why one culture if we study them in detail we study them under the subject of ethno linguistics it is named after edward seppel who is on the top you can look at the picture the picture that is on the top is that of edward seppel and benjamin lee wolf who is in the bottom yes actually these two people they are really very very renowned linguist of the world edward and uh, benjamin lee wolf edward uh, uh, edward sapir these two people they combined up and they gave one very famous theory of linguistics what was the name of that theory the name of that theory was sapir wolf hypothesis sapir wolf hypothesis sapir the word is coming from this person this was the name his name was edward sapir and then wolf was this person so they both of them in collaboration with each other they gave one hypothesis and the states the language that by providing habitual this states they stating what is there this sapir wolf hypothesis it was actually very very famous and see that what it is they say that language so the main thing the first thing that is important is that of language they say that language by providing habitual grooves of expression by providing what habitual grooves it gives the habitual compatibility is where of expression where people the through language people learn to express the things it predisposes people to see the world in certain ways look what are the what is the language that he has used he says that language is a means of expression fine sapir wolf both of them they are uh, they are giving this hypothesis sapir wolf hypothesis and they are focusing that by providing habitual grooves habitual grooves is what they are focusing uh, their habitual grooves of expression means language is necessary for the sake of expression of anything it predisposes people to see world in a certain ways it predisposes it helps it helps in what it helps the people in looking at the world in a specific way language tells language predisposes language makes the people ready 
लैंग्वेज इज अ थिंग एक्चुअली जब मेन एजेंट इज वॉट दिस इज अ लैंग्वेज लैंग्वेज वुड प्री डिस्पोज द पीपल टू सी द वर्ल्ड इन अ सर्टन वे to look at the world in some certain specific way can you believe it that, that is it possible that language predis that language is enabling us language is making us look at the world in a specific way do you agree yes perhaps you must agree because this is the reality this is proven through research how that language actually uh, i've forgotten the actual words um language it is said that language shapes our reality L language shapes the reality because language is actually what language is the expression of the words that is written over there if once we look at that we go through that we make up our mind okay that's this is the reality so this is a world the, the things are like this and we agree we say yes it is it predisposes people to see world in a certain ways and a very good example of this thing is what you know our media media not only print me not only electronic media but also print media what print media is doing look at uh, let's take an example of newspaper they write down the language they write down the main things in such a way that if we read those things if we read those uh, lines we see we feel and we say okay yes this is the reality this is actually the things are really like this so we have made up our mind and we have made up our mind that we have set that this is how the reality really is this is how the world really is again same is the case with the electronic media whatever we see whatever the language is being used we get so much inspired by that it it makes us think about the world in a specific way it gives us direction that this is the right direction that this is the this direction okay it predisposes people to see world in a certain ways thus guiding thinking and behavior thus what language do see what language is doing this is such a big thing this is not a small thing this is not such a small issue thus guiding thinking and behavior that language is guiding our thinking as i told you earlier that even in today's uh, researches the linguists say they have proven that language guides our thinking whatever we think it is going to guide us and the behavior the way we are going to behave uh, language is there to control our behavior ethnolinguistics and do languages structures um, and uh, cultures as well examples of sapir whorf hypothesis is what a hopi language is a language hopi is an example of a language conception of a time as possesses not discrete units for example hopi would hopi would not divide time into seconds or hours nor would they perceive time as object such as wasting time we are saying uh, the best examples of uh, this uh, sapir whorf hypothesis is that is the hopi language is a conception of time as a process while we think about that we are saying yes it's that we are looking at the time we are conceiving time as a complete process not in the discrete in not in the separate individual units for example hopi would not divide time into the seconds or the hours they are not going to divide it in the second or the hours nor would they perceive time as a object such as wasting time or do culture structure language the first point was 
do languages structure, uh, structure the cultures we were saying is it really true of uh, separate wolf hypothesis that languages do languages really structure the cultures the overall structures cultures is it really true or uh, the example was given is that of uh, hopi that in uh, in in that language uh, while we think of the time the conception of time in that specific language is given in a continuous process in that language they cannot think about the time in the single separate individual units okay we, uh, in this way we can say yes that language is structuring the culture in that culture what is the time time is a complete process it is not a discrete unit or the item second question was that or do the cultures structured language or whatever the language is is it going to be structured by the cultures over there or is it otherwise for example the newer of the sudan are the cattle herders children are named after cattle and poetry is composed about them more than 400 words are related to the cattle in our own culture we have a militaristic vocabulary we make a killing on the wall street we bomb the exam we have a war on drugs cancer poverty you name it so we have a chicken and the egg question does language condition culture or does culture culture condition language yes very very beautiful description is given over here in a previous slide we were saying that the main focus that our main focus is on what our main focus is that whether the language is structuring the culture because a separate wolf they have given their hypothesis they said that language is shaping our identity shape language is shaping our thoughts and once our our thoughts are shaped we are going to look we are going to look at the world in the same way now the opposite question the opposite stance of language is what or do cultures structures language or do the cultures if not that language what are the are these the cultures that are going to structure language example is given is that of nur they are the sudan uh, of the sudan are cattle herders okay there is there is one nation uh they are the speaker of the languages the speaker of uh, the language uh, they are basically the cattle herders the breed the, they are the uh, cattle herders what they do in that specific speech community children are named after the cattle as that is uh, they are the community of uh, the cattle herders so they are naming their children after the cattle and poetry is written composed about them true because this is their culture so it means that their language is getting affected by the cultural traditions more than 400 words are related to the cattle again vocabulary the language influenced by the culture more than 400 vocabulary items related to one specific field of the cattle because they bear, they themselves are the cattle herders now in our own culture we have a militaristic vocabulary we make a killing on the wall street that is that is something else let's talk about our own culture what our what our culture is and then we'll come to the major questions yes um what is our culture is our own culture we have a mi militaristic vocabulary in language uh, we are saying that there is a range of militaristic vocabulary related to the wars related to the things like that let me give you a very beautiful example of this thing actually i myself as i told you earlier in the very very first lecture where I, when i was introducing myself and i was telling you that i am a phd scholar 
my phd thesis uh, that i'm working on it's about crime reports actually i'm working on the newspapers language on the language of the newspapers just just uh, for your understanding i'm telling you a few of the things i'm t i'm working on the, uh, the newspapers uh, the language of the newspapers and within the language of the newspaper i'm just focusing on the crime reports now a few uh, like um, almost a month back while i was analyzing while i was looking at the deep at the structures of the language i found that uh, because i have collected uh, almost 1500 uh, news items that are related to the crime reports within those crime reports you would be amazed to see that there are thousands of words that i have pointed out regarding crime can you see can you believe it that there are thousands of the vocabulary items thousands of the words that are related to crimes why why there are so many words in the language and that are related to crime perhaps because crime is a part of our culture and this culture is shaping our language day by day the new words are being added suicide bombers target killing there is murder there is violence there is shelling there is bombing there are thousands of words i cannot even recall many of them right now so th this is what i was talking about our culture we make a killing on the wall street we bomb the exams we have a war on drugs cancer poverty and there are you know thousand issues so what to say is it the culture that is shaping the language or was it the language that was shaping the culture i think the we have a chicken and egg question that which thing came first in the world whether it was the chicken or whether it was the egg same is a question this is almost the same thing the same answer the question is does language really condition the culture or does culture really condition the language what is what is impacting on which thing and what are the results of that ethnolinguist some uh, linguistics and some areas of research within ethnolinguistics while we are talking about the culture and while we are talking about the language we are saying that there are some specific areas of research as well in that area the first one is kinship terms the terms father and mother may be extended to uncles and aunts there are some gender based meanings as well if we are looking at the at the uh, at gender if we are looking at the relationship between language and culture what are we doing actually we are doing uh, like we can carry out research we can look at the things uh, in detail in different areas we can uh, try to find out that how different kinship terms kinship the the terms that are used for the relationship for the for your pure relationships uh, for example father and mother they may be extended to uncles and aunts what can be done some gender based meanings gender gender based meanings we can also carry out a research on the gender based meanings gender based meanings it's really a very very vast field in ethnolinguistics where we are focusing on the language from gender perspective where we are trying to analyze the gender differences we are trying to look we are trying to explore whether there is any gender difference that is found in the language in the representation of language that is there for example look what a beautiful example is given by debra tannen she is a very very famous linguist when women say i am sorry are they taking responsibility for the problem or are they regretting the situation what is it if there is a context that is going on there is a conversation and a woman is saying i am sorry what does this i am sorry mean i am sorry means what 
are they taking the responsibility for the problems if a woman is saying i'm sorry it means that she is taking she is responsible for whatever she has done or i'm sorry the first to something that she is uh, regretting she is feeling bad oh i'm sorry that i should not have done it what are these two what these two mean these two words mean and another thing if a man say we are talking about genders na genders gender based meanings gender based meanings are those meanings the meanings of language would vary would change according to the gender for example if the same sentence is spoken by a man will it mean the same thing as it is uh, creating the meanings uh, when it is spoken by a woman this is it a question this is a question to think that i am sorry if a man is saying i am sorry means can a man say i am sorry is it really acceptable this these are a few questions that are raised that are uh, researched in uh, in perspective to in respect to the language in the lecture then the next is we have several social dialects in this country ranging from afro american speech to spanglish spanish english word combinations to regional dialects from the us south uh, gl to to uh, bostonian uh, uh, dialects so uh, there is uh, there are different dialects uh, that are there we have different regional varieties these are some areas of research where we can when we talk about ethnolinguistics when we talk about language culture and communication there is a vast vast research that can be done in this area and these were only a few of the key areas that we were having a look at and we were trying to explore that what can be researched in these specific areas code switching and martin luther king this in the second point the uh, while in the very very first slide of our of this lecture when we said that in order to explore the issue of language communication and culture in order to see that what is their uh, what is their uh, significance and what is the link between language culture and communication we said that there were the two main things that we need to consider the first point was that of that we need to look at which thing we need to look at the non verbal communication with the non verbal communication we need to look at the kinetics and the para language that was the first point then in the second point we were supposed to look at two things again the first one was ethnolinguistics and the second was code switching we have already discussed in detail that what is ethnolinguistics and now we are going to look at the code switching and uh, i have written intentionally with the martin luther king that let's see that what martin luther king why i have written it and what martin luther king has got to say about code switching we we, we change our speech styles to fit the occasion is it so yes this is so this is very very true we will we we will always try to change our speech styles uh, to change our uh, speaking uh, style just to fit the occasion just to suit that specific occasion code switching code switching switching style of speech according to the occasion and the audience yes this is a important feature of uh language and uh, once again another important area in the language this is code switching code switching is switching style of speech switching style of speech you are speaking something and you are switching from one style to another why and how why according to the occasion that specific occasion and the audience and the specific audience there are the two main things that matter in code switching the you that you are switching your style of communication 
depending on two things occasion that occasion has changed and the audience let me give you a good example for example if i am delivering a lecture in a class i am talking to the uh, to my class uh, and uh, you know the the setting of the classroom is really very very formal uh, there is a distant relationship between the teacher and the students we are let's say let's suppose that uh, the language that i am using within the classroom for the academic setting that language is english i'm talking to them in english i'm delivering my lecture meanwhile a colleague of mine who knocks at the door she calls me to just listen to her for one minute i would say them excuse me i would go to them i would go to listen to my colleague i will talk to her perhaps not in english i would switch my language and use start using the thing the language that she was using perhaps would do or perhaps some uh, if we are uh, very uh, like close colleague if we have got some uh, very close uh, interaction and the relationship with each other perhaps i can switch to some other language we can have some slangs in our language slangs do you remember that we discussed in our lecture that is a code language that we can use among us or perhaps we can like uh, talk in any way so there is a there is a change there is a switch in the language we have changed the language and why we have changed the language because of the audience and because of the occasion um occasion but firstly it was academic setting in the classroom but once i'm just towards the door i am standing in the corridor and talking to my colleague the occasion is different it is informal setting it is not the same formal one martin luther king junior was a master in court switching that's why i have written i have given example of martin luther king he was a master in the court switching ranging from the standard discourse in the formal settings ranging from the standard discourse he was really very very expert if there is somebody he would uh, where he had to talk in a very very formal way he would talk in the same way but the moment the situation changes the topic changes the audience changes he would switch in a very quick manner to some other language and he would come up to the level of their language this is code switching to informal discourse in a black settings language origins interspecies comparisons when language began is anyone's guess yes can you please guess this when language began we have discussed the origins do you remember that in earlier in our lectures we have discussed the origins of language when language began in a, can you please guess it defining communication and comparing different communication system is a first step how can we look at the origins and how can we do this is just a bit recapitulation we are coming towards that point defining communication and comparing different communication systems let's suppose there were the languages that existed centuries and centuries back in the pre primitive old period in the pre primitive period in the pre history periods let's say there were the languages that were existed how are we going to trace their origins we are going to look at the defining communication systems firstly we will see that what is the communication system that is there then we try to compare different communication systems we will try to compare the communication systems that have existed already there perhaps it can be written it can be oral definitely in the pre primitive in the pre historical era it was most of the time uh, oral this is the first step you are defining communication and then what you are doing you are comparing in uh, different communication systems so this is the first step chimpanzees chimpanzees have used american sign language and computer buttons to convey messages somewhat like languages amazing as 
uh, you know, we being Muslims, we don't believe in it. But scientifically, the people who believe in it, they say that chimpanzees and gorillas, these monkeys, they were actually the old creations of human being. They were the they were the old generations of human being, and human beings have emerged from them. As you perhaps remember uh, Darwin's uh, very very famous theory of evolution, that human beings have emerged, they have uh, uh, evoluted, or they have come from those. So they are uh, saying in the same traditions, uh, they are saying that chimpanzees have used American sign language and computer buttons to convey messages somewhat like languages. Is it really true? But speech organs have long since deteriorated, so we have at best indirect, indi indirect evidence. We don't have a direct evidence about this thing. Language origins, fossils and evidence. There were some evidences of the fossils. Yes, we have looked at this aspect as well. Did nin nin uh, uh, have languages? A human-like hoid bone, which anchors the tongue, was found in the Kebera cave, Israel. They are actually looking at the fossils. They are trying to analyze it whether uh, there was a system that existed about uh, this thing, this that existed about uh, the language, uh, about uh, whether the human beings have uh, the capability of speaking, whether the human beings have this brain. Um, that used to control uh, this uh, our language system. What was uh, what were the things? Endocasts indicating size of cerebrum and possible brocas area have been found among Homo habilis remains. These are some of the uh, language origins that we are uh, trying to uh, identify. Another indication is the flat surface at the skull base suggesting that the leading was too high to enable language. Non-human pr pr uh, primates also have a flat skull base and uh, high leadances. Basic conclusion, no one really knows when language got its start. Yes, although there are different evidences, uh, some fossil evidences they have looked at, but the basic conclusion is what? That no one actually knows it when it, is, when it has actually started. Features of language shared with the other species were there. For example, nevertheless, language does share some features with the communication systems of other animals. Do you really believe so? We look at some examples such as gibbons, stickleback courtship, and bee dances indicating the location of a nectar source. So that is actually the, the dancing of bee is that they are communicating with other bees. Some co common features of language and non-human communications are arbitrariness, productivity, interchangeability, displacement, specialization, cultural transmission. Some, these are some of the common features of language and non-human communication. Firstly, arbitrariness is as we talked in the very very first lecture that uh, arbitrariness is the quality of language absence of intrinsic relation between communication element and thing or the event to which it refers means between the speech sound and the object there is no direct relationship there is iconic relationship can be there existence of such a relationship between element for example gestures and its referent Importance is what utterance is not married to the meaning, such as a given's warning call. We cannot just quick always say that whatever I am uttering, it has some meaning. Sometimes it might not have. Arbitrariness. Example, for example, k and a and t are not meaningful in and of themselves. Meaning emerges when sounds are combined. So it's true. With the single sound systems, they are not meaningful at all. Cat has one meaning. Tag has another meaning, whereas on the on their own they don't have any meanings. Then comes arbitrariness across languages. Arbitrariness is there across different languages as well. Uh, there are different lang uh, there are diverse languages, so we can say that yes, there are uh, ar arbitrariness across different languages as well. The second quality is that of productivity. 
Productivity is the capacity for the elements of communication system to be combined to form new meanings which the speaker and the listener may have learned before yet understands perfectly. There are some uh, to produce something. Actually, productivity is related to the productivity of something. Uh, I'm I'm just leaving out. Actually, I've got some exercises in it, so I'm just leaving that out. Uh, these are related to uh, productivity in this picture uh, I am uh, for example this is a picture just try to look at this picture identify the nouns whether there is there any nouns the verbs and adjectives try to do it quickly is there any noun or the verb and the adjectives yes the answers of this productivity is that this noun surely the article the is a dead giveaway for tops and wave verb is there and then adjectives are also there Productivity and the language learning. Language drills use the principles of productivity. While we are drilling the language, while we are repeating the languages again and again, so we can say that we are using the uh, element of productivity. Uh, for example, in English, I am, you are. In Spanish, you say, two hours. So productivity means that you are trying to produce the things. Productivity among other species. Yes, we dance, so they are trying to produce the same thing that is there. Interchangeability, another quality of lang another quality of language as well as of non-human communication. Interchangeability, definition, use of the same communication system to send and receive messages. This interchangeability, one one message is given by the dance, and the reply would be given by the dance of the bees. So that is interchangeability. Displacement is the next thing. Displacement is actually ability to refer to the things in events not present, non-visible, intangible or non-existent. Ability to the refer to the things. Displacement where one thing is being displaced and they are referring to the events that are not present, that are not visible, that are not tangible and that are not existent. Uh, not present, for example, Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Not visible, termites in the sealed mound. Intangible math math equations, square roots. These are actually this is actually the these are displacement, and this is this is uh, the elaboration of that displacement. Importance is really very very important because ability to represent unseen parts of the world. Definitely, if we will have this ability of referring one thing to the other, only then we can refer to the unseen parts of the world. Parts of tool making ability. Yes, we can make uh, different tools. And yes, then cultural transmission and another important factor of uh, learning of an element of communication: speech, sound, and the gest gestures. Cultural transmission is always there. You know, language is so uh, deeply uh, interconnected with the culture. Bees and st and and uh, stickle black acquire behavior genetically. Whatever, uh, even the non-human, uh, there are some insects, they are going to acquire the behavior, whatever they have uh, in their culture. And dogs learn by conditioning, do not pass learning on. Chimpanzees do learn by imitation, pass it on. Yes, there are some non-humans uh, who would uh, uh, learn the things and they who would pass it on, but there are some non-humans who would learn the things and who would not pass it on. Then the last quality is uh, last uh, thing is that of specialization. Specialization is ability to transmit message with a minimal physical effort. Language is the most specialized of all the communication system where we just speak and the messages are passed with no physical effort. Examples of unspecialized communication: chimpanzees displays, bees dance, stickle be uh, stickle back courtship. So these are some of the actually specialization uh, they have to put some physical efforts where other human beings don't have to put any physical efforts so with this we come to the conclusion of our today's lecture and this was really a broader aspect of language and we were looking at the language culture and communication see what are the conclusions we are coming to the conclusion that language is not the basis of language is the basis of a culture sure it is the basis of a culture knowledge of linguistics a prerequisite to knowing how cultures function knowledge of linguistics we must have the knowledge of language a scientific knowledge of language is a prerequisite is a first requirement to know that how the cultures function how different cultures are really functioning 
we have already looked at the following things that we have looked at the descriptive linguistics we have looked at the culture and society we have looked at the com uh, comparative human and non human communication in our work and one question remains does culture condition language or does language condition culture the all chicken egg questions there are many similarity between human and animal communication so we'll end up our today's lecture with the again the same question ke ji pehle egg aaya ya pehle chicken aaya yes whether language is a thing that is shaping the culture or whether culture is a thing that shapes the language please keep thinking keep studying keep reading the things and perhaps you would come to some conclusion uh, in your life uh, do some kind of research study the things surf on the internet browse different sites then perhaps you may get to know many things so uh, please stay energetic uh, keep reading the things and with this today we'll end up our lecture over here and uh, we'll see you again in the next lecture till then take good care and allah face